fuel and how it is affecting our, our transportation to wherever we are going, there's also another 16% VAT on pest control products that would affect, you know, the agricultural sector in a big way and also compromise the issue of food security. So going forward, we may get to a point in our, in our country where we cannot, you know, really afford the cost of production and farmers may opt to do other things. So we may even lack food, Ram, going forward. So we, <laughs> as we, we talk about food. transport being expensive, food <coughs> is going to be very expensive. So life in Kenya is just getting interesting. But that ashes me into the conversation we are about to have this morning. Women at the Forefront begins right now. This morning I'm hosting... Um, Evelyn Lusenaka, she's the CEO of Agrochemicals Association of Kenya. This morning she's here to talk to us about not only her career path and how she has achieved what she has achieved today, but also her concerns in what she's doing uh, right and now. So right about now, thank you so much, uh, Evelyn, for joining us. Thank you very much. Yes, and yeah. a lot has been said and done you yes. know concerning VAT yeah. we'll be talking about uh, that shortly but very yeah. quickly tell us how Evelyn describes herself um, I'm an industry uh, representative mm -hmm. um, so I work for the Agrochemical Association of Kenya I am the CEO I, I represent over 80 manufacturers in this country of pest control products and not only pest control products they deal in seeds they deal in fertilizer Basically, I'm in the agriculture industry mm -hmm. and representing the private sector. We, we are a, a key component in any cost of production. And so for us, we provide food to this country. And that's what I can say maybe about mm -hmm. what we do. Yes. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Evelyn, for coming this morning. Yes. And uh, here at Women at the Forefront, we yeah. always have women who are leading in different fronts. Yes. And uh, we sort of want to empower young women who want to be like Evelyn someday. Yeah. So let's get to understand a bit about Evelyn before yes. we look at what Evelyn is doing and her role in making sure that farmers and manufacturers have a better yeah. you know, business environment out there. Mm -hmm. Tell us a bit about uh, something, probably let's begin by something people don't know about you you know being the CEO and all that yeah <laughs> what do you think people really do not understand about you Lee? Um interesting um, I, I've never really thought about that <laughs> <laughs> but um, one of the things that I must say is that I'm really passionate about what I do I really love my uh, my job I really love lobbying and I really love meeting with different stakeholders to ensure that I create a favorable environment for the business community who uh, deal with pesticides. Mm -hmm. And I really like, would like to see the small farmer who is out there in the, in the village doing much better for himself. I am I'm also very passionate about young people to ensure that they uh, grow up to be something out of their lives. I do a lot of mentoring and I talk to them in schools, in high schools. And for me, um, when they look at me, I'm very, I really am very strict with them because mm. I really want to see somebody doing well in life. And so that's maybe something that you, they would think I'm very strict or anything, but I really want to see people excel in mm. life. And so, especially the young people. And so I really want to push them up and work together with them to be, to do something out of their lives, yes. All right, yeah. so you're not strict, people think you are. And people think I am, <laughs> but I'm not. <laughs> Yes. Okay, so mm -hmm. um, being in the agrochemicals industry, this, okay, you know, in, in our country, there, there are industries that have been sort of termed masculine, others yeah. are feminine, mm -hmm. others are safe for women, others are not. Mm -hmm. I'm imagining in your sector, I know very many people are in skirts. It's, yeah. it's a male dominated world. Yes. Tell us a bit about it. How is it like being there? Did, did, did it find you or you found it? Okay, um, the pesticide industry in Kenya actually has really evolved. Currently, it's, it's, we still have a big proportion or a big percentage is male dominated. And uh, mainly because it's a really technical field, you really have to be out there dealing with chemicals and um, for days and ages uh, you're out there with farmers, rough terrains, and it's really not easy. Mm -hmm. And so it has always been assumed that it is a male dominated field. Over the years, we have seen few women coming in, but still, 
I can say like in a boardroom, I'm the only maybe woman. Mm -hmm. or I remember when we were looking for, when we were compos uh, composing the board of the Agrochemical Association of Kenya, mm -hmm. so we wanted to have gender diversity. Mm -hmm. And we thought, where can we get a woman in the industry who can sit in this board? Mm -hmm. It was really a challenge. So it has been a big challenge for us uh, as the industry to get ladies on board. And um, it is an assumption that was made for many years that this this industry is for men. And even right now, if you go out there, many people believe women should not come in contact with the chemicals. And so it's uh, an industry even women themselves have shunned. They really do not want to be part of. But um, the women who are coming in also are really not directly involved in the uh, chemical or in the actual mm -hmm. handling of the chemicals. Yeah. But they are coming in. Uh, I can see a few women coming in, and especially in the technical side, in the cells. And it is amazing to see that the industry, the women are taking notice mm. about the industry now. Mm. Yes. Is there anything like certain careers are for men, certain careers are for women? What, what do you think? <laughs> I look at it both ways. I <laughs> okay. actually, um, I believe there are some careers which men should do that, okay. and some careers which women <laughs> cannot do. And it's quite controversial because I know the uh, people who uh, believe in women power and everything mm -hmm. would kill me for this. But I think there's some certain careers we should leave for men and there's some careers, no, no not even careers, fields that men can do. Um, women can do. We can do anything. We can do even spraying, even handling these chemicals. We can do, but sometimes we need to consider where we are coming from, our our, our genetic makeup. Mm. We need to consider quite a bit before we say that we can do everything a man can do. That's my po my, <laughs> my position on that. That's yes. in two minutes sense. Yes, yeah, yes, that's what yes. you think. Yeah. Let's talk about you know how to um, get to where you are. You've yes. risen in, in as much as you're saying uh, women are very few in your yeah, industry. Yeah. You've risen from one level to another in this particular yeah. industry. Before I I get to understand how exactly it happened. Mm. I want to know the inspiration behind what made Evelyn decide that this is the direction I want to go. Yeah. In as much as it may not be very common for women to mm -hmm. try out yeah. this, yeah. this is what I want to do. Yeah. And did you know this at a young age or it just came to you at, at some point? I, I, I hope my parents are listening, but <laughs> I've always been, I think I'm a very aggressive person. Yes. I've always been aggressive. I, I've always really known what I want to do. In campus, when I was in the university, where I did horticulture in university, most of my classmates were focused on going to work in the horticulture field. Mm -hmm. I defied that. I never went to any field. Okay. I went to the chemical companies myself. Okay. And that's a field where no women were going. So I took myself to the, an, a chemical company. Luckily, I got one of the, one of one person by, from by East Africa who really had faith in me. And he brought me into the industry. And he really mentored me. He took me up and he really encouraged me to go, uh, to go further in the industry. And gave me opportunities still in the same industry to continue pursuing different fields in the industry. Mm -hmm. Coming from the same, uh, I also completely left uh, the technical part of the horticulture or agriculture. Mm -hmm. I went into management. I did my master's in management. Then I still went back to the University of Cape Town and did and specialized in my field of pesticide risk management, wow. where I can be able to assess the risk of these pesticides before we even accept them into the country. Mm -hmm. So I, I can say I've, I've taken <laughs> myself, I've tried to accommodate different areas um, in my field and also in management so that I can work in any field, but at the same time, uh, I have a speciality which is in pesticides. Okay. Yes. So w where did you get this information from before you started, you know, your career path? Did mm -hmm. somebody inspire you? Were you looking up to someone who is in this particular industry and you said, I want to be like that person? I must say when I went into the industry at first, I was really... No, I was really young, so you're, you're just know, you're young and restless, and you're taking risks. <laughs> okay. But when I went in and I looked at the industry, I saw the people in the industry, and I thought this could be something that I can build my career on. And I looked up to um, um, the, especially the managers, the management, because I got into the association, I got into the uh, to deal directly with them. MDs of the companies of the manufacturing sector. And I thought 
I would really want to work with these guys. Okay. I would really want to do what they're doing. And that's how I really managed to get myself. I really cannot say there's one person who really inspired me, but I, right. my mm -hmm. former boss uh, really, really also encouraged me and really put, took me to where I am, actually. Mm -hmm. He really pushed me. He really encourage me that you need you can do this you can lead this industry mm -hmm. and here i am i've i mean to get to where i am i faced quite a number of challenges mm -hmm. first of all i'm um, I, I'm a perceived to be uh, maybe young, maybe I'm yeah. a lady. Actually, you're perceived. <laughs> you're so, not young. Uh, <laughs> so it's it 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 was a challenge. Yeah. It was. So um, nobody was really taking you seriously. Yes. Yeah, still yeah, you're still you very young. Yes, and all yeah. that. But the the industry had confidence in me, <laughs> yeah. and they gave me this chance to lead them. I believe I've really done quite a lot for them in the few years that I've been there, and I'm really I really want to propel this industry even to higher heights. Yeah. You is. know, one would yeah. look at your career path. Yeah. I don't know if two or two, that's when it took shape, but you began as a marketing manager. Yes. Um, you risen to a training manager, yeah. went ahead to be the deputy CEO of yeah. AAK. Yes. Now you're the CEO. You yes. know, that is like a ladder, and it doesn't happen to everybody. Some yeah. people are stagnant at one position yes. for years. Yes. They retire in that position. Mm -hmm. I want to know the secret, you know, behind that kind of achievement. What is it that you think you implemented that people probably could borrow from? For you to rise the ranks in your career, what does it take? I persisted. I am very quite persistent. I I never gave up. I've never given up on what I want to be. Mm -hmm. And when I look at um, the industry and where I've come from, mm -hmm. there are, there are some instances in some companies it has not been easy, but you persist. And if you feel that this is really not working for you, you need to divert and look for what works for you. I. Well, I've worked with the industry for over 15 years now wow. and um, I believe I've made my mark. I, uh, I grew the, we, had a, we have a stewardship portfolio in the Agrochemical Association of mm -hmm. Kenya. I've really managed to grow it to, have, to make it the biggest in African Middle East because we wow. fall under a bigger umbrella organization under Af African Middle East. So it's what you do that gets you noticed. Mm -hmm. It's what, uh, whatever impact that you make that gets you noticed. And that impact is what I have created for this industry. Mm -hmm. And not only in Kenya, because uh, as I was uh, developing my career and as I have grown, I got to be, um, to be incorporated into the Africa Middle East office mm -hmm. to support them in the technical issues. I've got very good exposure uh, regionally, uh, meeting different people, meeting different stakeholders in various spheres of agriculture. So it's what you do. Well, uh, I would like to say what you do and you do it well, I'm sure people will notice. And when they notice, they would want to work with you mm. and they want to see you work for them. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> but mm. I know it has not been an easy path. It has not it is, been it an easy path. It has not been path. ABC. Like it has not been A, a to B. A. I, I, it has I, taken I recall, time and I recall one of my colleagues telling me that if I was you, I would have given up a long, a long time, time ago. <laughs> but I, I still persisted. Mm -hmm. And still, it's not that the journey has ended or it has stopped. Every day is a new challenge on its own, and you have to keep working hard for uh, each, each and every day. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Let's talk about now what you do. I'll yeah. come back to you know more about Evelyn later, mm. but let's talk about what you do. Yeah. Um, you really you said earlier that you are really passionate about young people. Yes. And I want us to begin there. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the youth and agriculture. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe just to paint a picture, uh, the UN uh, Population Survey of 2015 actually mm -hmm. says that Africa, we are leading, we are among the continents that are leading yeah. in young population, mm -hmm. having a, a, about 200 million young people yes. who are between the ages of 15 to 24. Mm -hmm. And Kenya is actually among the countries that are ranked top yeah. in the number of young people that you have, having 20.1% young people. And when you look at this population, I see people who are seeking life, people who are seeking opportunities, people who are looking for something to do. And we are talking at a time when there is this menace of unemployment. Mm -hmm. And still there are people who are saying agriculture has been like a game changer in trying to help curb the problem of unemployment. Mm -hmm. But we are not seeing the young people really interested in being part of agriculture. What do you think is the status of agriculture vis-a-vis -vis young people in our, in, in our country? 
I would like to begin first by saying we are policy makers. We make policies, we make uh, strategies, we make everything to do with agriculture. But we have really ignored the part, the, uh, the part of making agriculture attractive to the youth. Yes. Uh, agriculture is a source of livelihood for many people. And uh, I'm sure when we look at many population in Kenya, they've grown up because their parents were involved in agriculture. Their father had to sell maize, their father had to sell a cow here, and everything to get them 